first story. Entitled OP told her boyfriend her family actually cares about her to hurt him. Knowing how abusive his family was, and how he had to cut ties with her mom, traumatizing him, and still wonders if she is a whole. Arcy Hole, I have a boyfriend, 21M, who came from a family of addicts, cut off all ties with his mom dad was never in the picture, and basically only talks to his sister. Anyway, he had wanted me to go out with him on a date. But I told him we would have to reschedule because my dad wanted to take me out on that day. He had gotten all defensive and said, why am I always putting them before him? He said there have been multiple times where me and him couldn't do something because I had to do things with another family member. He also said it was getting annoying and that he kind of regrets dating someone who was so close to their family, to which I replied, it's not my fault. I have a family that actually cares about me and didn't neglect me for drugs. He got all quiet after that and hung up. I tried calling back multiple times and he's not answering. I don't know if I should text and apologize or just leave it alone. Edit. I sent him a long message apologizing for what I said. He hasn't answered yet. I think he might be sleeping. I hope he sees it in the morning. Comments. Bob 8 372 What you said was a dumb move. I think you know that. What you might not be considering is that it seems like there's potentially a broader pattern that's causing an issue here. How often do you spend quality time with your boyfriend? How often do you cancel plans with him to do something with your family? How often do you cancel plans with your family to do something with him? How often do you initiate plans with your boyfriend? When he tries to make plans with you, do you shut him down if you're already busy? Or do you try to find a different time that could work? It seems like he's trying to tell you that he doesn't feel like a priority in your life. From your post, it seems like he's right you don't prioritize him much. That's not going to make any partner feel great. You don't have to put him above your family but you have to make sure he feels like a priority. Strange irrational. So your BF was maybe being a little pushy, and you thought it was appropriate to say, yeah, well, my family loves me and yours doesn't. That's pretty much the only way to interpret what you said. You knew this was one of his most sensitive spots, and you chose to jab him right in it. It sure sounds like you were trying to hurt him intentionally. Don't bother apologizing if you still have to ask why T.A. S. Janoff. As someone who had a parent with an addiction, why T.A.? Is there indeed a pattern of you cancelling to prioritize family? That's tough in any case, and given his background, I can only imagine that this really feels like rejection to him. If I were you, I would sit down with him and listen to what he had to say without getting defensive. Listen to him and hear him talk about how he feels. OP. So from his perspective, each time I rescheduled, it felt like rejection. And yeah, as soon as it's morning, I'm going to see if he messaged me back and call him so we can talk this out. I mainly said that sentence out of frustration because he was saying stuff about my family that rubbed me the wrong way. But now I know that I could have communicated better, and not just lashed out at him in that way. When Ainsmith, why are you making plans with others when you already have plans with your boyfriend? Why not tell them you already have plans and ask to see them at another time or day when you don't already have something organized? Judgment YTA. Update. 11 hours later. Update. I thought he would wait until the morning, but he randomly FaceTimed me saying that he was also sorry about what he said. It was basically us going back and forth and apologizing. Anyway, tomorrow we are going to meet up to have a deeper discussion, as I want to properly apologize to him in person for what I said, and let him know I'm truly sorry. Update 2. Okay, we met up at this restaurant and talked about it. I explained multiple times that I was sorry, and that I should have never used his trauma as a jab towards him. He also apologized for telling me to stop seeing my family. I told him I'd cancel the plans with my dad and any other plans in the future if it meant we could continue the relationship, as I didn't want to lose him. He got all happy about that, and now I'm over at his house, and we're just chilling together. Thanks to everybody for the advice. I got a lot of messages telling me how to apologize, and what to say if I really wanted to continue going through this with him. It's not a fully healed relationship yet, but it's a start. Comments. Happy flowers. You should not stop seeing your friends or family in order to continue with the relationship. I look handsome good. Guy grows up in a shtty household full of addicts and doesn't understand how you and your family are so close because he doesn't have that experience. Then weaponize that against him to make him feel bad. Why Tia here? Milkshrik pasta. In regards to update 2, I don't think it was a good idea to say, I'd cancel the plans with my dad and any other plans in the future if it means we can continue the relationship as I didn't want to lose him. It sets a bad precedent IMO. But you are your own person and can choose to do what you want with your time. Second story. My ex-wife wants to reconcile after five years of divorce and is trying every move to impress me. 
but I have a girlfriend. Hello guys, my wife, and I divorced five years ago. It was an amicable divorce with no resentment on either side. We were simply too young, and she had to move away for her career. We kept some contact over the years. Last year, I lost both my parents in quick succession. I did my best to work it out, but it's not easy. When my ex-wife heard of it, she immediately reached out, and I supported her. Thanks to her, I pulled myself back up. Now, we have obviously started to reconnect, and she asked if we can try again, now that we are both more mature and in better places. Not get married again right away, but rekindle our relationship. I feel conflicted. I did not completely lose my feelings for her, but recently I have started dating a girl, and she knows this. She said she doesn't want to put me in the uncomfortable position of choosing, but that's what she's doing. I don't know how to proceed. With the other girl, we are just in the early stages of dating, so my ex-wife is not intruding on an established relationship. Relevant comments. Every thought 5 the 834. People do grow and sometimes come back together after divorce. You are now wiser. My personal opinion is to put your dating relationship on hold until you sort this out. Good luck, OP. You are right. I'm not a player, and I want to be transparent with both of them. My ex-wife had a funny way of putting it. She said it's like a job interview, and I have to pick whom I think's the best candidate. Update. Two days later. My ex-wife and I divorced five years ago. Divorce was clean and amicable, so there were no hard feelings. She reconnected with me last year after my parents' death and recently asked if I could consider giving her another shot. Today, she told me she had gotten tickets to the opera for next Saturday. I love opera and classical music and invited me. She also proposed to have dinner at the restaurant before the show. Does this mean she's serious about us? When she sprung the idea on me, I had already started casually dating another girl. She likewise sees other people. If she's really serious about us, I am thinking of breaking it off with the other girl. Additional information from the OP. Basically, she said she recognizes she didn't behave fairly with me and wants to at least try to make things right. She sees we both matured and have a real shot at making it. Update. Nine days after the last update. Hello. Just letting you guys know that we had our date and she just dropped me off at my place. She came to pick me up with her car. She was beautiful I mean she always is but in her dress, she was breathtaking. First, we went to dinner, then to the opera. She insisted on paying for everything. I know she can afford it with her career, but she was adamant that since she asked me out, the tab was hers. I think she studied the whole thing in detail to win me back, and honestly, she's already succeeding. We talked a bit in her car before she left me, and we shared a small kiss. I do think she is damn serious about giving us a second chance. She even thanked me for accepting her and asking me out, adding some details about our divorce. It wasn't due to cheating or anything traumatic. She was pursuing her career, and we drifted away. She said she came to regret leaving me and not fighting for our marriage, especially after some really bad experiences she had with guys after me. I do think she is sincere, and her motives are genuine. I am comfortable financially, but she's become way more wealthy than me, which is fine since she worked hard for her career. I don't have any resentment towards her leaving me. I had some at first but being on my own helped me mature and experience new things and relationships. I did pop her the $1 million question. If I take her back, could she still leave me out of the blue? She replied that she learned to never make the same mistake twice. I feel fuzzy, maybe hopeful, and my head won't stop spinning. Additional information from the OP. One thing I forgot, regarding the girl I was dating before my ex-wife, and I reconnected. She knew about this, and although both she and ex-wife said that for now I don't have to be exclusive, I am going to talk with her and end things. We just casually dated, so I don't think she'll be heartbroken she was seeing other guys too. But I'm not a player, and I don't want to lead her on, especially if things progress with ex-wife. Relevant comments. From Micah Dynat. Agreed. If you want to make things work with the ex-wife, it has to be just you and her. OP. That's what I think. She said she's not asking me to be exclusive right away. But I think that having another girl on the back burner is not right. Update. Five days after the last update. Hey guys, it's me again. Some of you said that after last Saturday's amazing date, she took me out on, the ball was in my court. So I made my move and invited her out this Saturday too. I was thinking of taking her to a beautiful historical village in our area, which is also holding a festival for the spring. I was a bit nervous about asking her, because it's not as fancy or exquisite as what she did for me. But she immediately said she would love seeing the village. There's more. She mentioned she had a client scheduled for Saturday morning, 
but she assured me she was rescheduling said client so we could have the whole day together. I was dumbfounded. Back when we were married, she was adamant that her career was her priority. And now she's chosen me over something related to her career. I don't have my parents anymore. But my sister and my aunt are still here for me, and generally, they always saw right through people. They agree that she's not just serious about us having another go. She is damn serious. Some of you commented or asked about her financial situation. Like I said, I am comfortable financially, and I enjoy my own career. She's become very, very successful financially. She has two cars, which are more than I make in a year, and her place is one of those new, ultra-modern mini-mansions. I admit this intimidated me a bit at first, but I told myself if she reconnected with me, it was because of me as a person, and not my status. So I am doing the same, although I genuinely admire what she achieved. Also, to address some guys who are implying, she just had fun and dated around in the last five years. It's not like I sat in a dark room alone all that time. I dated, had my flings, and even had a two-year relationship. So I too come with some extra mileage. But what matters now is that we both want to give us another try. I wasn't sure about my feelings towards her some days ago. But now I know that I still love her and have never stopped. And she most likely feels the same. Maybe I do have my head in the clouds now. But I am determined to show her she made the right choice in reconnecting with me. And we can overcome any obstacle we might find on our path. I feel that this time it will be different. Anyhow, for now, I'll just focus on having fun together on this date and many more to come. Relevant comments. Kraken's Rudra. Why not? You both are grown adults. My advice would be to take things slow, enjoy the ride, and see where it takes you. If you are both meant to be, then you are meant to be. Just don't confuse lust with love. And you both are in a unique situation here. You aren't strangers. You both know what didn't work out and what did. See how it goes. All the best. OP. Thank you. I agree with the advice about not getting confused by lust. And I believe we have matured to the point where we can sit down and find a solution for any problem that might arise in the future. Terser 78. Just be sure y'all talk through things that cause stress and eventually ruin the relationship. Canceling work plans now, when the relationship is in its infancy and the honeymoon phase exists, is nice. But will she still feel the same way and prioritize you when y'all have settled into a relationship? I think it's really important that y'all discuss what didn't work for each other the last time and be sure those same relationship patterns don't exist. If she really is married to her work, so to speak, then it may explain why she struggled to find a partner. Maybe you were the only one who tolerated it the longest as compared to others. And would you be okay with it if it's still her priority now, OP? You make very good points. Our marriage basically broke down because she wanted us to move to another country for two years for her career, and I have my misgivings about it. So she went off alone. We talked about this. I asked if this situation could happen again. She said she might have to take business trips, but no longer than a week, and even then, no more than a couple of times per year. I am willing to work with that. Update. Four days after the last update. Hello guys, I'm back. Many wanted to know how it went. We had a very fun date, and an amazing weekend. We were supposed to get back home and or end the date in the afternoon but I got so caught up in the festival's activities that I wanted to show her a popular landmark in the area. Then we got back to the festival in the evening. It was almost midnight when we got back, and long story short, I ended up spending the night at her place. Maybe it's the afterglow speaking, but I think we could really have something good going. We agree that we have both matured since five years ago, and the feelings we had for each other never went away. But we have also changed as people, so of course it's different now, and in a good way. I guess that the only thing to do is to go forward and see where this leads. I'm quite optimistic, but I also understand we have to communicate and be careful not to fall back on the same issues that ended our first relationship. Of course, we aren't talking about remarrying anytime soon, and we very well could not remarry at all. We'll take our time and see where this relationship leads. Wish us good luck. Updates. For context, we have been divorced for five years. She reconnected with me last year, and we started dating last month. Things are quite good for now, but like many people said, we are still in the honeymoon phase, so it's way too soon to tell. We mostly go out on fun dates, and we celebrated Easter with my sister and aunt, who welcomed her back with open arms. We ended up again talking in her car, as she drove me home, I swear guys, I have my own car and license, but she always insists on driving herself. Maybe I was a bit tipsy, and I told her how much she's changed in personality, appearance and standing. She said I changed little, if not at all. 
And that's why she wanted to get back with me. She said, I think I have changed. But she saw I am still the same optimistic, kind-hearted, fun guy she knew. Especially after she saw how I am dealing with losing both my parents and how I dealt with another deep loss two years ago. I thought I had grown a bit jaded and maybe pessimistic in those years. But she said that's not the case. She says I have matured, but deep down, I am the same. I think she too has matured in those years way more than me. I'm just sharing some thoughts. Update. Hello guys, I hope you are all doing well. My ex-wife of five years reached out to me last year after my parents' passing, and she's been a support for me ever since. Last February, we resumed our relationship, and things are going pretty well. We did talk about our new relationship in the long term, and we have agreed we are in no haste to get remarried anytime soon. However, she would like for us to explore the theme of children at some point in the future a couple of years. The topic of children is a bit sensitive for me because I lost a child in a previous relationship with another woman while we were divorced miscarriage, and it was heavy. However, I would be open to getting on the topic if things keep going well in the next couple of years. The ex-wife knows about this, has been very respectful about it, and agrees that now it's definitely too soon. However, she wanted to put all her cards on the table, and I appreciate her being straightforward. She asked me to consider moving in with her full time at some point this year. Her house is very spacious, and she says it's too big for her alone. As of now, I sleep at her place a couple of days a week, and she sleeps at mine on the weekends. We are also planning a long romantic weekend at my parents' house for next week, so things are good. We got the serious talk, but for now we will keep taking things slowly, enjoying each other, and exploring our new relationship. At this point, I am not even sure if I should call her ex-wife anymore. She says that girlfriend is just fine. Third story. OP's wife, who doesn't want any more kids, agreed to be a surrogate for his best friend without even telling OP. Now she's asking him for assistance, but he just lashed out and said, ask your friend. Now everyone is calling him in a hole, and his wife is staying with her best friend, leaving her daughter behind. My wife and I have been married for about three years, together for five. She has a 16-year-old daughter she gave birth to when she was a teenager. But we both decided we wouldn't have children her and me. My wife's best friend asked her to surrogate for him and his husband, and she agreed. I was opposed to this, but she told me to deal with it. I told her to be fine, but don't expect any help from me. Now that she's uncomfortable being pregnant, she feels nauseous, tired, and sore. I still do the thing I would do if she wasn't pregnant. But when she complains about cravings or needing something from the store for her pregnancy, I tell her to call her best friend. Her best friend and his husband are calling me an arsy hole. But I remind them that this isn't my baby or my responsibility. Relevant comments. Egbert 64. Whose egg was used to make the embryo. Hoping not hers. That would just take this to a whole different level. Are they paying her a surrogate fee? I feel sorry for OP. I would not be surprised if he left her over this. And I really couldn't blame him. Her ignoring his views is very hurtful. OP. No, it's not my wife's egg. It was a donor. I'm not sure who she is, but she doesn't have any connections to me or my wife. Well, at least not before this. Replying to a comment, she said she wants no children with OP, but is willing to be a surrogate. This is unfair to my wife. I mean, we both don't want children of our own. My wife is happy only having her daughter, and I'm happy being just a stepdad. On if his wife is getting paid. Nope, they're not paying her. They are paying for all the medical and legal fees involved, but they are not paying my wife. I don't think my wife even considered getting paid for this. Update. Hello everyone, my wife and I had a talk and agreed on a few things. She says she's sorry for making this decision despite my objections. We had a lengthy heart-to-heart -heart about this. We agreed that we would go to marriage counseling after the pregnancy is done, and she's had some time to recover. We also agreed that she should live with her best friend and his husband during the surrogacy. We talked to them, and they both agreed to it. Her daughter my stepdaughter said she wanted to stay in our current home. She doesn't feel comfortable intruding into someone else's home, so she's staying with me at our home. My wife very rarely apologizes. I don't want to give up on this marriage so I'm willing to work through it. Additional information from the OP. Beneficial Syrup 869. How far along is she? This doesn't seem healthy for your marriage, especially if she is in the first trimester. Months apart while you're in charge of your stepdaughter. Why can't you start marriage counseling now, virtually? She apologized. But is now running away to be babied by her friends while you're home alone with her daughter. OP. How far along is she? About six months in. Months apart while you're in charge of your stepdaughter. 
we're not going to see each other for all those months. She'll primarily stay with her friends to make sure that she and the baby are comfortable. We also discussed that if she or her friends don't feel comfortable, she will move back in, and we'll figure something else out. Also, my stepdaughter is pretty independent and responsible. She's 16, so it's not like I'm taking care of a baby. And we agreed that my stepdaughter can see her mom at any time if she needs to. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.